Hello everyone! Hi, how are you guys doing today? Welcome back to another episode of Reaction to Chainsaw Man. That's right. My name is Matt. Hello! What's up? So, last time on Chainsaw Man, what happened? So, I finished editing the Chainsaw Man episode like like a day and a half ago, two days ago. Uh, the previous one. Because I've been having a terrible busy week. Uh, and the heat has been killing me. So, uh, that took a little bit. Hopefully this one will take less. Uh, we're nearing the end of this first season, I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's just the first season and we'll get more. Because to my understanding, Chainsaw Man is still coming out, the manga is, so... Um, I'm not sure where the stopping point is gonna be, if we're gonna have a cool ending or, like, a cool cliffhanger or something, but... It feels like we just went through, like, the first, like, important event in the show. Like, very major, major event, uh, episode 8, and episode 9 is, like, how we resolve it, which is through some bullshit powers by Makima, and Kobani coming in clutch, so, uh, this episode should be, like, a little bit of, like, the aftermath of it, like, the immediate aftermath, so we'll see where it goes. Denji is currently in half, Himeno is nowhere <laughs> and aki i don't know he's bleeding out on the floor probably komi is like the only one that ended up okay after this attack literally the only one i mean makima but also makima was shot and executed point blank and then she just stood back up so uh she did get hit it's just that she has some bullshit ability or something uh that makes her uh, unable to be hit by stuff i i had like a couple of like theories about what the fuck is to deal with Makima, but like, like, they, they range from like, she's on like a weird crusade against devils, but she's like, she's using all, she, she's planning to use all potential devil power in order to end devils, uh, she's the store from which all devils come from, uh, she is the gun devil herself. I, I, I don't know. She was the original chainsaw. Like, at this point, I'm grabbing from like nothing. I'm literally just throwing shit at the wall. Just being like, okay, what sounds like something crazy that could be possible from like a storytelling perspective that would be cool and, and shocking? And I'm just doing that now because I have no fucking clue what her deal is. <laughs> All I know is that she creeps me out. <laughs> so, okay, uh, that that's where we're standing here. Uh, Power just ran away. Like, last episode, we didn't see her at all. Uh, so, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I think we can begin with uh, episode 10 now. Uh, Snake Girl and Sword Boy. I, I think Snake Girl's name is Sawatari. I think. I, I forgot about the last episode, but I, when I was editing previous episode, I was like, oh yeah, they did say her name. I think it's Sawatari. I don't remember if we ever heard Sword Boy's name. Um, but... Yeah, those two are the only survivors that we can see, and they just run off. We'll see where this episode goes. I, I feel like it's it's gonna be an episode kind of dealing with the the fall-off of what happened just now. Uh, so yeah, uh, let us begin. Uh, before that, Patreon. Patreon, check out the link in the description below or the pop-up on the screen. You can support the channel, help me out, uh, pay for my food, basically. Uh, and you can get access to full-length reaction episodes for all of Chainsaw Man. Yeah, that would help out a lot. Let us begin. Chainsaw Man, season one one episode 10 let's go cool they're just hanging out with him they're reading manga together relinquish the apple aki aki's like shut the fuck up shut the fuck up okay um uh-huh Ooh. Oh my god, I see. Fuck it, smoke. He's thinking about her. You can cry, man. It's okay. <sighs> oh, 
忘れた漫画取りに戻ったら泣いてんだけど。Of course he is. バディの姫のも死んだわけだしな。I guess he didn't form a really a connection. Oh, I feel like he wouldn't either. Like, Yeah, I think he just hasn't had time with people in order to. Also, that, that could be a case, but I don't think so. I think it's just. He's just having trouble making friends. Because he doesn't know how to be friends with people. He doesn't know what it takes. Oh, this too. Help coach? Oh, intro. I was so in, enthralled in the drama that I forgot that we haven't had the intro yet. These two characters, Tendo and Kurose, they struck me as like the two dudes from Naruto that have names but no one knows their name. It's the two dudes, the two ninja dudes that hang out at like the door of the village. You know the two dudes that I'm talking about. The two dudes that are always together. <laughs> Doing what? Doing literally what? Is this the dude? Yeah, it's the dude. It's the blonde dude that we see. We saw a couple times. The one that trained him now. Shh. Damare. あ、<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> Oh my god, what's your name? Did you break their necks? Oh my god, what's your name? She looks so happy drinking that blood. Makima, you might touch your kitai de curato tanomarita. Ningeo kitai de goto aruga. Oh, my touch me tena, Akuma, Ichidomonai. The Koruni Araritan or the Tsuini Hirameta. Okay. Or a psycho no devil hunter. So I'm just gonna try and kill you. No tauser of Akuma was psycho no waka. If you can kill me, you pass. Okay, sure. Okay. Oh my god! Oh my god, that was so cool. So he uses a knife. Oh my god! <laughs> Fucking god damn. Mostly immortal. I'm gonna fuck the both of you real up. You're gonna be the fucking best. I'm gonna fucking make sure of it. Oh, Fox is dead? Okay, no. She's just, she's just pissed at them. We need to give you new something else because you can't do anything anymore. He only has two years left. He's gonna fuck it. Yep. キョートン先輩の言葉は本間でしたわ。食い金には<笑> 
mother, sister. Everyone should be dead, so. Oh my god. <laughs> he beat the shit out of them for like five hours or something. Just killing them constantly and rehealing them. What the fuck? You're back? How many times did I die? Oh my god! I kind of really like this. These two bonding a little bit over this. The fact that she was like, Come back! Come back! Heal! <laughs> Just beating him. I got it! Yes! Yes! What if I could be like one of those smart characters in a comic book? We shall slaughter him with our wits! I want to see what this two fucking idiots will try to come up with. Girl, what are you wearing? Did they put on glasses just to be like, okay, we're smart now? The highly silly real warfare began. Did they do some home alone shit? Oh, my man was ready. From above, yes, from above. Oh my god, this guy is fucking cracked. This guy is such a badass. Holy fuck! Oh my god. Of course. I got your glasses. Okay, so she's useless immediately after that. And you didn't expect that would counterattack. Good try though. Let's go out a day. <laughs> I'm just gonna go drink now. <laughs> what would you believe him? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Back to dying. Uh, where are we going? What devil are we gonna make a country with? Oh, we capture a bunch of devils. This is a devil prison. Oh. What did that say? That's a bunch of letters. Oh my god, this is ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ
great, actually. I wonder what they were reading. I wonder if they were reading JoJo. Aki wakes up b while Denji and Power are just fucking yelling at each other because Denji's eating apples and Power is like, Give me that apple! And they just start fighting over it. Uh, I, I, di I did like seeing them just sitting there next to each other, just being like reading manga and just next page, next page in silence. Like, genuinely, that's like such a cool thing. Like, that's such a cool like we're best buddies friend kind of thing like at least to me it's like it's like that's how you actually get close to a person like Denji and Power are almost like siblings and the good kind of siblings they yell at each other all the time but they they're like hanging out and doing stuff together which is nice um but they just start fighting and Aki just wakes up and I, in my mind I'm thinking Aki's like shut the fuck up shut the fuck up just let me sleep but no he wakes up immediately he realizes the situation and he's like did anyone from division 4 survive and the answer is Koveni and one other guy I think his name was Madoka dude with glasses he lived and uh and then he quit <laughs> there you go and no one else so ha Aki has this moment of like shit and then he slowly starts to realize what that was um, like what that means and like they leave him alone in the room and he's just sitting there and then he the first thing he does is he grabs the nail it's not a sword it's a nail and he's like curse how many how much time do I have left and the curse devil just shows up behind him and says two years okay that answers that question what did it, Aki give away a lot so Aki's gonna die between now and two years, tops. The fact that Kurt says he's gonna die in two years doesn't mean he's gonna die in two years. It means that he will die at the latest in two years and maybe at some point before it. And in fact, the fact that he's cursed to die in two years almost makes me feel like he's gonna die earlier, you know? Because it's kind of like a subversion, but at the same time, because it makes sense. It makes sense for him to be like, I wouldn't be surprised if we got to like a, f a fight with like the gun devil or something like we we eventually do get there and Aki is literally just gonna sacrifice himself and he'd be like Denji fucking get him get his ass like he's gonna like destroy his body to give Denji the the chance to attack or something because that's like the only thing that's fueling Aki right that's like the only thing that motivates him and he's like I'm dead either way doesn't matter what I do and that's also why like Tendo and Ma um what was the dude's name Kuroze, I think. That's why they show up and they're like, hey, do you want to keep doing this? And Aki's like, where would I stop? And I'm like, yeah, like, why would he? Because at this point, he's given so much and he has lost so much and he doesn't really have anything else. Like, literally, like, even if he quit, right? If he quits public safety, then what? I'm dead in two years. What the fuck does it matter? Like, you can argue, like, well, sure, you can, like, try to enjoy your remaining, like, 700 days to live but like fucking whatever he's still like no fuck it i'm just gonna go on risk my life and i'll try dying for something that i care about instead of just saying fuck it and just going out and just drinking away the remaining lifespan i have so he's driven but at the same time i really like that we, we got a scene where he just breaks down crying remembering him you know and I really like that he did. I really like that we saw it, right? Because him and his last words were literally just like, please cry for me. Like now, like when I'll be gone, please just cry for me. Because like the thing about Himeno, and this is why I really like her, is that Himeno really likes Aki because Aki is a person who cares so much. And to Himeno, that was like almost seeing like a unicorn. That was seeing like a fantasy creature because Himeno is like a person who's like dead inside, right? Everyone around here is dead. So to Himeno, the world is like almost like dead. So when Aki shows up and it's just like full of life and care, even if he doesn't show it all the time, he he does care. And he cared about Himeno and did that like little gesture with the, when the woman that slapped her. So to Himeno, that was such a like moment of like, holy shit this guy because like this is a guy that's showing you that someone does care so to her that was like world changing so when she's dying she's literally saying this and then she's like please just cry for me when i'm dead 
like hopefully you'll you'll do that because that's almost like asking Aki to like to in a way like reciprocate her feelings in in some way because because Himeno keeps just wanting Aki to just see her right to just see her and accept her and be with her and just like go out together she's like Let, let's go work together in private you know she asks Denji like help me get with him so her final thoughts are literally just like I hope he at least cries for me because in life the entire time they're together Aki is just like doing shit for Makima and he's doing shit uh, like for, to get the gun devil like he's so focused on what his like destination is and he's also kind of focused on Makima as well we we haven't seen to what extent but clearly he is so in life Himeno is like I just want him to see me because he doesn't understand how important he is to me and I'm not just gonna tell him because she doesn't she doesn't do that like Getting closer to people like that is really difficult. And especially for someone like Himeno, who's just like dead inside. She's just gonna continuously try to suggest. And Aki is just impervious to it. So to Himeno, that's essentially the same as him just rejecting her. Just completely dismissing everything that she is. Which kills her inside. And so when she dies, she's like, at least just cry for me. Like, at least do that. Because... It's one of those things of like, like I matter to you. Like at least after I'm done, after I'm gone, at least I I want to know that you did care for me. And he did. And not that I doubt he would, but what I mean is that I'm glad the show sh showed me that, right? I'm glad that we got to see that on camera. I could just break down crying because we had to, right? I, I feel like... We really had to in order to make that entire like thread with him and Oanaki like have a degree of a conclusion, right? Have some sort of ending, have some resolution and for it to feel good, right? Because that feels good. It feels good to know that that was what Himeno was. And after she's gone, it's still a thing for Aki and it's, it's still right there. I love these two characters. They're fantastic. I love Aki and I love Himeno so much. Uh, like, I, I I think I heard, I, I saw someone that was just saying, like, well, Himen is just, like, a, she's there to, like, set up, like, a plot point. Like, she's not meant so much to be a character. She's just, like, meant to be there in order to, like, for, for the events of episode 8 to transpire. But I disagree. I think Himen is a fantastic character on her own. I'm, I'm a human number one stand here. I will continue to fight for Himeno rights. Uh, so yeah, uh, Himeno and Joyers rise up. And yeah, this is an episode where she's not nowhere in it. And I'm still talking about her. She's great. I was glad to see Aki cry. I, I was glad to finally see it. And as he's crying, Denji is just right there at the door. And he's hearing him cry. And he's just thinking to himself... Man, I just wanted to get my manga back, but he, the dude's crying. And then he has a moment of like, well, shit, that makes sense. Like, he just lost a bunch of people that he cared about. He lost his partners. He lost uh, Himeno, who was really close to him. And then he starts thinking, Himeno is dead. And then he starts remembering all the events from, like, episode 7. They're together, and Himeno's literally on top of him. And they're cuddling together. They kind of sleep together. Not not sexually, just sleep. Like, it, it, maybe in the same bed. I don't know if they did, but... Yes, they just chill together. And then the next day, Himeno is like, let's be friends, you know? Like, let's be closer together. You're gonna help me with Aki, and I'm gonna help you with Maki. And it's like, okay, and they're gonna do this alliance thing. And Denji is, like, confused. Because he comes to this realization that... I don't really feel that bad about it. I don't really feel that strongly about the fact that she's gone. I'm not destroyed like Aki is. And then he starts thinking, like, would I be sad if Power died? Don't even entertain that thought. But he's like, would I be sad if she was gone? Probably not. Then he's like, would I be sad if, like, Makima died? I feel like I'd be bummed out about it for, like, a little bit. But after, like, a couple days, I feel like it would be good. And then he's thinking, like, well, I have all these, like, good food and stuff. So I, it, it would be difficult for me to be bummed about it for too long. And there's a couple things about that. And he, he asked to himself, like, am I a bad person? Like, did I, when I got my heart replaced by Pochita, did I actually lose my heart or something like that? Like, he's trying to find an explanation as to how he should feel. And 
like he's trying to find a way on a like he's trying to find the way he should feel and he's trying to find an explanation as to way the way he does feel and i mean the, the the issue here comes from the fact that denji just doesn't have an understanding of what relationships or intimacy are she doesn't understand these things she has a desire for them but he doesn't fully understand what the desire is and he doesn't understand how to get there and, and that makes complete sense like this is this is in some ways like it feels like the best coming of age story i've ever seen <laughs> because it is denji is a character that's very particular because he has never had had any life experiences he has been essentially forced into like slavery and like organ trade from kid age and he hasn't had any life since then he didn't go to school he doesn't have any friends he doesn't have any relationships he doesn't have a concept of how society works uh he he never even had like decent food he just eats plain bread so then a character that like doesn't understand anything which is fantastic right it, it's fantastic to have a character that's like that because then you can build from it and the entire like the entire premise of the show is almost like going through Okay, there's all this fucked up shit happening, and it, the plot is really good, and the fights are great, but Denji as a character is a character that's, like, completely oblivious to everything. And constantly, he's like, ooh, I want that, I want that, I want that, these things are all great. Like, he reads in a magazine, like, if I put, people put, like, jam in their breads, and it tastes good, so he's like, I'm gonna try that shit. Like, his entire understanding of how life works, of what one should want, is entirely based on what he sees is something that you should want. So I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking he probably just saw someone with a girlfriend one day and he was like, oh, that would be cool. And that's where his understanding of what a girlfriend is comes from. He sees a magazine and there's boobs in it and, and they are portrayed in this thing of like, oh, look at these things. And he thinks, oh, I want those, you know? So like his entire understanding, it's almost like, and it's like, I mean, this kind of shows my age. You know, I grew up in like the, the 2000s, early 2000s. So like, it, it makes me think of like growing up in the early 2000s and watching like, I don't fucking know, like American Pie on TV. And those movies are like super frat boy movies, but they were everywhere when I was a kid, right? Movies like that. And not just that movie, but like movies of that type. And what those movies do, and shows like that do, and like Hollywood in general, at least mostly in that era was, is that it's trying to sell you the idea of what you should want out of like puberty or out of like that era of your life. Like, like late teens, young adult era. Like this is the idyllic kind of life. This is something you should try to kind of try to get. This is what they're trying to sell you. And Denji's understanding of what he wants, it's almost exactly that. And it's it's relatable on some level because he, he's a child. He doesn't have any understanding of how the world works. He doesn't have any understanding of what he should want. And like, it's clear that he wants stuff, but he doesn't understand what he wants. I was just talking to my friend uh, here because my we were talking about the the teacher and we're gonna talk about the teacher in a second but when when uh denji and power they try to fight the teacher and they come up with the plan like my friend mentioned like oh the glasses right and i'm like yes the glasses but then i had the realization of like both of them like there's no reason for them to wear glasses there and for power to like make her hair into like um like a secretary like ponytail kind of thing i don't know what that is called but that the the fact that they're doing that they don't have to do it there's no reason for them to just wear the glasses and stuff and yes it's funny but i don't think that's like the purpose of them being there i think where i think what that is meant to be is the fact that like both of them are so so childish that they think that that is what you're supposed to do when you're showing that you're smart it's like they watch cartoons on tv and they saw, oh, the smart character, not even, they were reading the manga. Denji said, literally, he's reading the manga, he's like, yeah, 
yeah, I want to be like the cool smart guy from the comic that I was reading. Like he just saw a character in the manga that was super smart and he was probably some bullshit anime character with glasses who just does this shit, just like, mm. and then you see like the shine in the glasses and, and then she's like, yeah, I want to be like that guy. That's so cool. So like it's the, it's almost like their entire understanding of what they should be doing is entirely based on like something they see and they have like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Almost like a five-year-old. And it's it's great because that's actually what it is. Like, they're children. Both of them. They're, they're like, even if they don't look like children. I mean, they're teenagers, which is a grown-up child. But still, like, it's, like, their understanding of how life, society, anything works is so, so childish. And that's, that's not a bad thing. It's just very interesting. And I really like that Denji... Like, we, we get to see a lot about Denji, like, internal monologue, and he's thinking, like, am I a bad person for this? Like, what what do I actually want? Like, how would I feel if this was the case? And he's like, well, maybe it wouldn't feel that bad, you know, I have, like, good food and stuff. Like, he, he's like a child. He is. And I really, really like that. Like, that's why this is such a good coming-of-age story, I feel like. Like, I'm calling Chainsaw Man a coming-of-age story because it I feel like it really is but that's what makes it so good is the fact that these characters i mean denji for sure and also power we power absolutely they're both characters that don't really understand the world and that's something i feel like we can all relate to on some level because at some point we all were like five year old at some point we all were like eight year old ten year olds you know so yes these characters even though they're grown up and they're being they're being thrown into the real harsh world, and yet they have no understanding of how to handle themselves, much less a world. So the fact that they're being thrown into a situation where they have to fight this guy who keeps killing them, it's its like, it, it's basically torture, really. That's what really what it is. It's cool, but it is torture for these children that don't really know much better. And it's kind of fucked up, but, like, they approach it from such a childish way, too. They're like, yeah, let's do, like, an anime plan. That will that will get him. And the guy is just like, this fucking stupid. You know what? Actually, that was a good attempt, right? Didn't work, but that was a good attempt. Anyway, I'm just gonna go drink some alcohol or whatever. And then he turns around and fucking stabs them in the face. And it's like, why would you fucking believe me? Like, it's not done. I'm just going to keep killing you. And it's like, okay. Like, Denji and Power really see the world through the eyes of children who have really limited understanding that it's almost like fantasy-like because it is. Like, they, they're trying to do things that they see in manga and stuff. Denji's desires come from what he sees around him and he thinks that that's what he wants. He has such a rudimentary, like, understanding of what intimacy is, that that's, his goal is something he doesn't really understand. He keeps thinking that something will make him happy, but it doesn't. Because, and it's not about chasing something and then you get there and it's not worth it. It's the fact that it, he doesn't understand what he's actually after. I was actually having a conversation with a friend of mine the other, like, last night, that was uh, incredibly personal. And incredibly regarding like things regarding intimacy right that's fresh in my mind right now and that's something i'm thinking about and i'm like yeah denji's kind of like that and that's not something that isn't obvious but it's worth pointing out the fact that uh denji's understanding of everything is so basic and it's sad and it's easy to forget that it is sad but the same applies to power as well mostly because power is inhuman so power is essentially a child because she's trying to adapt to what humans are but she's just a feral animal <laughs> trying to fit in with the humans so that's that's uh that's something i really like okay we talk enough about that i think let's talk about this teacher man i don't think they said his name in the episode i don't think so i think machinism was about to introduce him and he was like, all right, shut the fuck up. Okay, three things. One, how do you feel about your partner being dead? I don't care. Two, how do you feel about revenge? It's fucking stupid. Three, what side are you on? Humans or devils? Uh, I don't fucking care. Whatever's winning. 
And the dude's like, all right, perfect. You get full points. <laughs> and I was, I, I, I was thinking that he would be super down for that. Because when he was talking to Himeno, he seemed like so uncaring. But he kept giving her lessons. And his main lesson was, you have to be fucking crazy in order to win. All you gotta care about is surviving. So do whatever the fuck you need to in order to survive. It doesn't fucking matter what you do. And when they replied all of those things, I'm like... This dude's gonna be like super down for that. He was gonna be like, perfect, you're honest and you have your head straight. Perfect, there you go. All right, let's fucking work. And then he immediately just turns around and he like breaks their necks <laughs> immediately. I was like, is this a weird hug? And then there was like a weird cracking sound effect. And they were like, I can't move. And I'm like, oh my God, did you break, did you break their necks? He did. And then he was like, all right, so here's the thing. If someone breaks your necks, you're fucked. But the, 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 the good thing is that y'all aren't human, so that means that if I give you like a little bit of blood, you come right back up. So he just fucking poured blood on them. And Power drank that blood so happily. She was like, yeah. And then they stood back up. It was great. And then this dude stands up and he's like, all right, you two are functionally immortal. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna fucking kill you until you get good, okay? This man is hitting them with the Dark Souls training resume. Like, this is the Dark Souls treatment. He's like, all right, I'm just going to fucking kill you until you can stop me. <laughs> so that's what he did. He just started fucking killing them immediately. He just stabbed Danger like seven times in the chest and fucking put him out. And then he stabbed his said, I think, just like, just like that. And then he just get got Power's throat. And they both just passed out. And then they came back. <laughs> so then we cut away from that. We go back to Aki. We'll talk about Aki again in a second. But then we come back to them and it's like nighttime. And he's like, all right, that was good enough for today. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs> he just walks away. And then Denji and Power are just sitting, are just standing there. And Denji just falls down. And he just goes like, yeah. and Power's like, your brain is broken. Heal, God damn it, heal. He just starts punching him in the fucking face. Just ooh, ooh. until Denji's like, oh, what happened? And he just comes right back up. That was amazing. I, I actually love, I, I've said this before. Like, I, you know what scene? It's such a small scene, but it's a scene that I still remember and I really liked. Is the scene where Denji's like bummed out that he touched booze and he didn't feel that good. But like later, he's like walking like back to uh back to base or he's like patrolling or something, but he's hanging out with power and power is just standing behind him and, and she's just doing this like weird march thing and then just so bummed out. And power's just saying shit and then she goes like jump and just hits him back in the back of the head. I really like that. And the reason why I like that is because like that's that's like what that's what hanging out with someone who's close to you feels like. That's what it is. Because like all this like like niceties and this like front that you're putting for someone and trying to be proper and trying to be nice and trying to be decent and trying to like even if you're trying to get close to someone but you're vocalizing it and it feels weird, like that's not what being close to someone feels like. And it definitely is not about physical connection either. Like, it's not about sex. That's not how you get close to someone. The way you get close to someone is essentially by doing what Denji and Power are doing. They're just chilling together. Like, we... You see Power doing the chop thing in, in Denji's fucking head. We... Like, there is, like, an implication that they made a prank on Aki in, in the episode, right, when they're starting to get into the hotel. Like... They did like a prank together and they're just like doing shit together. In this episode, we see a lot of teamwork between the two of them together. We And even if we don't see teamwork, we do see that little bit when they're just like, I think Power is like resting on Denji's like shoulder and the Bojo's reading manga together and they're just like moving the pages. Like he's moving the pages for her and then they start fighting over the apple or whatever. But it, it, it's all of this like minor things that though that is what being close to someone is like which is why when denji says like would would i be sad if our died and he's like probably not i'm sitting here thinking like out of everyone here i feel like he would be the saddest over power being gone and maybe not right now but i feel like if we keep going this direction he would be because this is like what being good friends with someone is like is ex exactly this but over 
a, a longer period of time. So, like, if they keep just doing shit together and just spending time together and being very casual around each other, that's what an actual bond is. And I think that out of anything in, in that we've seen in this episode, and, like, I mean, episode 8 is fantastic, and I love Himeno, and I love Aki. Those are very mature characters. I think out of anything on the immature side of the show, which is, like, the weird coming of age story with, with Denji, I feel like the best thing about it is this, like, this little tiny details that we see of Denji and Power just hanging out together and being friends. Because I think that even if they don't realize it, they're growing really close to each other. And I'm not even gonna say romantically. Um, like, Power is like a weird devil puppeting a uh, corpse made of blood, I think. I, I don't fully know how, like, I don't fully know how uh, fiends work, but I also don't fully understand how Denji works. I don't know to what degree any of that matters, but the reality is that they're gro growing closer to each other, right? They're being intimate with each other, and I and this is the road to actual intimacy. And even if the like both none of them have an understanding of what that is, so of course none of them are going to explore it. But this is this is the road. This is the correct way, and none of them are going to realize it. I don't think. So what a, a concern of mine is, and I hate to say this. But what a concern of mine is going to be is that, like, Power's going to, like, die at some point, And that's the moment that he's going to realize, like, shit, I really like Power. Like, she was actually my friend. Like, the first friend I've ever had. The first person I cared about. Like, like I feel like that's going to be it. And I'm going to hate it. I'm going to hate it if that comes to pass. But if it does, I feel like it would be really good storytelling-wise. I would hate it because my favorite characters will be gone, but I, I, I can see that as a possibility because I feel like all these little details is what adds up. All, I think all of this really matters. Okay, let's talk about the actual training. I mean, I don't know what you want me to say. I just really like the, the idea of them just being killed and coming back over and over for hours. And then they're thinking to themselves, like, let's do some 200 IQ shit. A thousand IQ of your power. Of course, but like the the fact that they're both thinking like, aha, we're gonna think tactically, we're gonna make a plan, and that's gonna get them. And they're like, oh yes, this is gonna work. And I'm just sitting here like, oh my god, what are these two idiots gonna do? Like this is gonna be fun to see. And it was a it was a decent plan because it was some home alone shit. Denji was waiting for an ambush. Power just fucking tried to impale him right away. And then there was a trap set with blood on top of him. But he just dodged everything. I have no fucking clue why. Like, I don't know what this guy can do, this teacher man. I don't know what contract he has or if this is just him being cool. I don't, I don't know what his deal is. But something that's really cool about this that I, I thought about is that devil hunters die very often. Like, this is just a thing that was shown to us. They just die very often. We, we saw it a couple episodes ago even when they're like out drinking it's like oh what's what where did that rookie that you had with you go and it's like oh she died yesterday and they're like oh shame like that's how often they die and this guy this teacher man he's like 40 maybe 50 <laughs> he's old like i don't know how old he is but he's old he's the oldest character we've seen in the show he's the oldest devil hunter and in order to live that long you have to be pretty good <laughs> because like if people die that often it means that for someone to make it to that age he has to be like really fucking good he has to be fucking cracked so i don't know what his deal is like as a character as and as a combat and as this actual devil deal i have no idea what his deal is i have no idea what he can do but i'm very intrigued he's very good I, I hope this character stays for a while because I can see him being like such a like he looks like the no bullshit type of character like he looks like a character that like he he knows his shit and he knows what to do and he like like if everyone in this show is like a child or immature in some ways this guy is just the most mature person ever and he's just like fuck it I don't fucking care just fucking do whatever and then he just walks in like I feel like he's the kind of person that would be like I'm gonna tell you exactly what you're doing wrong, and you're gonna fucking die, 
and then it's up to you whether or not you want to like act on that or not and he's like i don't fucking care what you do but you're gonna fucking die if you do this man like he's he's that kind of person and i really like a character like that i really like a character that's just like smart and incredibly aware of everything but he just doesn't care because like in order to live that long you have to not care Be because that's also the thing he's a survivor which means that whatever fucking happens i can imagine he's the kind of person that is like I'm gonna win every fucking fight, but like, if he ever comes across like the gun devil or some devil that just cannot be beaten, he's just like, well, fuck it, doesn't matter, I'm done, Ch bye. And he's just gonna fucking leave. He's like, there's no fucking point in doing this shit, I'm just gonna go. Like, he, it's, it looks like he's the kind of person that's gonna try whenever it's doable, but the moment it isn't, he's like, well, I don't fucking care. That is the kind of personality I get from him. Like, he's always just accepting that he's just fucking dead but as a result of him not caring is that he's lived so long because in some way like caring and having your emotions be like so visible is what actually like ends up getting you right like even Himeno she died because she cared about Aki that for example like people in this show are probably gonna die because they care and that's just gonna be it but this guy is a guy who doesn't give a shit and thus he's the character who survived the longest okay let's talk about aki going to make a deal with a new devil because this makes sense uh so we have tendo and kudos that show up and talk to aki and then they're like all right you want to quit or not and he's like i'm not quitting and they're like okay cool uh you need a new contract because uh con Okay, nothing happened. Yeah, the fox devil is angry at you. Because you made her bite into whatever the fuck that sword man was. And she was angry at you for making her do that. So she's not coming back. She's done with you. Maybe, maybe she'll come back at one point. But for now, she's pissed. So you can't rely on the fox devil anymore. And the other thing you have is the curse devil. Which every time you use, you fucking almost die so yeah it's like what do you do like you, you need an actual reliable source of power in order to fight so okay they they so they convince them okay we're gonna get you a new deal they go to essentially devil prison which is a thing in this world and they're like all right you're gonna make a country with a new devil we'll see which one they get there and it's the future devil which sounds really intimidating i really love the idea of a future devil I wanted to see what it would look like, but it just looks like an eye. Um, yeah, like, it, it's just an eye. I, I, I suppose it's an eye because, it, like, the idea of seeing the future is a thing. It's a thing. Seeing the past is also a thing, so. Maybe the past devil is also an eyeball. You know, they're, they're matching eyeballs, maybe. But uh, the future is... It has to be a powerful devil because the future is scary for most people i feel like on some level at some point in their lives the future is just a scary concept the uncertainty and what's to come and maturity and so, like i don't know everything that you have to adapt and change in order and you don't know how you how you're gonna do that you, you know what the future holds all of that is just the future the future is such a nebulous concept that it encompasses so many things so the future devil is okay, uh, he's, he's to be a big boy. They talk about only two devil hunters being able to have made a pact with the future devil before. And they lost, what was it? One had to give up half of their lifespan and the other one had to give out both of his eyes and he says of taste and smell. Okay, that's a lot of sacrifice to make. I was just talking with my friend here, like, like 10 minutes ago, and my friend was like what kind of sacrifice could the future devil ask of aki what is he gonna give and i'm just sitting here i was just sitting here and i was like you know what could be and like it's it's so possible that i would be willing to put down like money for it right i'm not gonna do it because i'm broke but if like i i, I was like he's gonna give away his past and what i mean by his past is his memories I'm thinking, because what is the only thing that's important to Aki right now? There's nothing else. There's nothing left. So what can Aki give away? He has two years left. He has no future. He has a past, though. What that means is, because, like, that's the most important thing to him. That's what drives him. That's what motivates him, is 
the memories of the past of his family dying to the gun devil, he's like, okay, that's what turned him the person he is. The memory of Himeno, that's definitely something that's very present in him right now, and he he's clinging on to that, and that's definitely a drive. So I think the future devil might just ask him, like, give me your past, give me your memories. And Aki, I feel, is just going to take that. Aki's just going to take the deal. And also because I, I just don't see Aki, uh, a character just giving away like a like a body part. Because if he gave like one eye and he had a cool eye patch, then maybe. But I like I, I, I don't think that's enough of a pay. Because because they just told us like what you would have to give would be so so great. Like he could lose like an eyeball and an arm. And maybe that would be enough. Um, and that would make him look cool. But that's the thing, is that I don't think he could give away too much because then he would stop being a cool shonen character. <laughs> and the like your your character needs to keep looking cool in order for, for you to draw them in the show, right? So you can't give away something that would make him just unusable and unmarketable. <laughs> that's that's how I see it, right? Because because not even just the marketing aspect, but just if I was drawing a manga and I had this character, I would want to keep drawing this character as cool as possible, which means that I wouldn't make them sacrifice a lot of themselves physically because that would fuck with the character design. <laughs> Again, unless it's something really cool, such as an arm and an eye, and then you have a cool eye patch, and then you can do cool stances with only one arm. Maybe you can get like a prosthetic arm, and that's also really cool. Like you could do that. But besides that, I'm thinking it has to be something that's more that that's not physical. It's it's more of a concept. And I think memories is perfect. Because memories is what drives Aki. Memories is the things that's the most important to him. You're gonna have to give away that boy. I like this idea a lot, actually, because this would make Aki a character that has no future and now has no past. I would really like that. The only thing he has is just the ability to, to do some crazy shit, just power, just give away everything in order to get power, not the character, just the concept of power. And then, like, that's the question, like, would he keep his like motivation or of an idea that he has to take out the gun devil or something? Would he keep that? I don't know. We'll see. Himeno's sister showed up and she came in with a bunch of letters. Um, I mean, it's it was a bunch of them that we saw on the table, but we only got to read one. And it was a letter about Himeno talking to his her sister and being like, hey, How's dad doing? Like, he keeps, like, we talk, but, like, I'm worried about him, and I want to know if he's taking his medicine and stuff. She talks about how she got Aki to pierce his ear. She talks about, and this, this is the best about it, it's the fact that she talks about her wanting to quit public safety because she doesn't feel like it's safe anymore. She wants to quit with Aki. She wants Aki to quit. She's telling Aki, let's quit together, and Aki refuses. She shrugs it off. And Himeno's like, I was being really serious, but he didn't listen to me. And this is, like, Aki reading this is him realizing, oh shit, she really genuinely wanted me to quit. It wasn't just an offhanded comment of like, hey, let's go get a, a new, a better job, you know? She was just actually just, I want him to just stop. I want him to live. She was worried for him. She was worried about him. She cared about him a lot. And this is, like, some an extra, like, just, just a twist of the knife, you know, just, oh, it hurts. And it's Aki realizing how much she actually did care for him and how much she was actually trying to do for him. And he just never saw it. That hurts, man. That really hurts. Himeno continues to be the best character in the show. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to the scene where you, you we get to see the letter. I don't think this is going to say much, but we're still going to read it. So the letter is in Japanese, and the subtitles that I got don't actually translate the full letter, just the zoom-ins. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna grab my phone, and I'm gonna open the translator app from Google. And this translator app has this thing where you can use the camera to translate for you. So I'm gonna translate a little bit at a time. 
As for me, I still feel like I'm going to die every day. I feel like I'm going to die really soon. We kill demons, but the people around us die too. It feels weird. Cha, but that that's something I don't understand. Like, that's something that didn't translate very well. I don't know what that means. Haki's covering part of the letter, so I can't read it with his thumb. But it doesn't change anyway, Aki. I'm particularly worried about I saw by usual, but somehow I woke up and then I fell asleep around me, so I'll think about it later. Hey, the other day, every, the, everyone was at work. I'm particularly concerned. Let me buy you some water. Uh, when I noticed, she was um, the one for forced Aki to pe get I his ears pierced. What do you mean? From Aki, you were in a lot of trouble. I wake up. I was angry when I said that because it suits you. I think that final bit is talking about how Aki was like angry at the fact that he got his ear pierced or something and Himeno was like no it looks good on you or something like that um so I think that's what that means uh, I don't fully know what that letter said I hope there's a there's probably gonna be a translation that I'm gonna see at some point this week uh if not please point it out to me if you are someone from if you can speak or read or talk Japanese, please translate that letter for me in the comments. I'll, I'll give you like the little YouTube heart thing so everyone can see that translation because it's, I want to know what that letter says. But because it sounds really cute and it, it really looks like Himeno really cared about Aki and that's what that was. So yeah, uh, I think that's going to be it for this episode of Chainsaw Man. I don't know what else I can talk about. Yeah. Uh, this is just gonna be it for today. Thank you so much you guys for uh, Watching this video hearing me talk about it. I'll see you guys next week All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this episode reaction to Chainsaw Man If you would like to watch the next episode reaction then subscribe to the channel So you'll see it as soon as it comes out check out the patreon if you would like to support me more directly or just check out my social media and stuff Whatever, it's fine. Thank you so much for being here. Take care everybody. See you later. Bye